Today we will discuss why we should no longer perform D's and C's for miscarriages and why you as a patient should not have a DNC. Stay for the duration of this video to find out why. What is a DNC? It's an archaic procedure. It's a procedure where the doctor is working in a uterus blindly trying to spoon out tissue. It is important for you the patient to know the doctor cannot see what he or she is doing and it is all done by feel only. Would you park your car in your garage blindfolded? Why are gynecologists the only surgeons allowed to work inside a human organ blindly? We have a hysteroscope, which is a telescope with a camera attached that we can place into the uterus and we can both see what we are doing and treat at the same time. We can remove polyps, we can remove fibroids and we can remove a miscarriage, very seldomly cause any harm to the uterus. We never use electricity in the uterus, we only use mechanical instruments. As I said before, well, would you park your precious car in a garage blindfolded? No one would. Here I have placed a hysteroscope into the uterus. This view is unfortunately an identical twin miscarriage which was diagnosed on ultrasound. Here is the pregnancy sac. The placenta is obviously at the back, what we call posterior. This is the tubal opening on the right and this is the left tubal opening and this is a very healthy decidual tissue or the pregnancy lining of the uterus which we unfortunately as gynecologists have been trained to remove all this tissue blindly and invariably end up with in excess of 30% of our patients having intrauterine scar tissue formation better known as Asherman syndrome after the DNC. This tissue should never be removed. We should not scrape in the uterus. There should be no need to do a DNC to terminate a pregnancy that is no longer viable. Patients should actually refuse a DNC. The DNC should be banned. Remember, it may also be referred to as an evac or evacuation of retained products of conception. This is the pregnancy sac. Now I'm going to show you how we open the sac and are able to evaluate the fetus. Here I am in the gestational sac and this is the am amniotic sac and in that sac we see the yolk sac and here we see the villi. It looks like coral. It's easy to see and we can biopsy the villi which is part of the placental tissue and I've just done that now and we are now going to send this off so that we can test to see what the genetics of this pregnancy was. There is the small fetus. It should be nine weeks and I can see how this fetus has not grown at all. So there's the fetus in the amniotic sac, a very small fetus, which is probably genetically abnormal. Stay until the end of the video to find out what the genetics of this fetus was, and we will also have the gender. Now, all I'm going to do is use a mechanical tissue removal system, and I'm only going to remove the pregnancy, and this uterus should heal up beautifully. The other important thing about this, this instrument is that I can use it to aspirate and shave, so I don't have products of conception that get in my way. We are going to leave the rest of the decidia because this is what is going to heal nicely and reduce the risk of Asherman syndrome. Here you see that I'm only concentrating on the area where the placental implantation was and I'm leaving the rest of the healthy decidua. This is done within a couple of minutes and the procedure is far less traumatic and complete than a blind DNC. The direct visualization ensures that the uterus is empty, there is a placental bed completely removed, only concentrating on removing the placental bed and removed only the pregnancy and we leave this decision to heal up in order to reduce the risk of intrauterine scar tissue formation or as I mentioned Asherman syndrome. 
The pregnancy was actually genetically abnormal. It was a trisomy 3. In other words, there were three chromosomes uh, number 3s present in the fetus instead of two chromosome number 3s. And this is a sporadic abnormality. And most of these sporadic abnormalities are a reason for why patients have an early miscarriage. The gender was actually a male. In light of the fact that we have the answer as to the cause of the miscarriage, this helps the couple to come to terms with it and move on. Should the genetics have been normal, this will prompt me to do more tests to assess why the patient miscarried a genetically normal pregnancy. So in order to recap why we should not perform a DNC, it's a blind procedure and it's a dangerous procedure and there's a good chance that you can lead to infection as with any surgical procedure we can lead to infection which can lead to fever pelvic pain and vaginal discharge and even infertility the risks of this happening with a hysteroscope are far less common you can have bleeding, and some bleeding is normal after a DNC, but excessive bleeding can occur, which may require further treatment and is often related to a uterine perforation, again due to the fact that the doctor cannot see what he is doing. So the uterus may be punctured or perforated during the procedure because of this blind DNC. A pregnant uterus is very soft and can easily be perforated when you're working blindly. And the other complication is intrauterine scar tissue formation and adhesions or scar tissue develop inside the uterus after a blind procedure. This can cause infertility, recurrent miscarriages, or abnormal menstrual bleeding. So what we do know is if we remove retained products of conception with a blind procedure, there's at least a 30% chance that you will have an incomplete removal and leave parts of the pregnancy behind. And there is also a 30% risk of intrauterine adhesion formation. Whereas if you do it mechanically with a hysteroscope, looking at it with direct vision, the risks are less than 1%. Another procedure that we need to mention is that when we are uh, terminating a miscarriage, you will also hear of doctors saying, I'm going to do a suction evacuation. And there a suction tube again is blindly placed into the uterus. This is a very smaller surface area than the curette that they use when they do a DNC. And this can easily penetrate and perforate the uterus. It has the same risks as a DNC because it's blind. In other words, and I've mentioned it before in, in the video, that's infections, perforation, bleeding, etc. And a large percentage of these patients get scarring in the womb afterwards. And they also have incomplete emptying of the uterus because it's blind. I hope this video has been helpful. And if you like the video, press the like button and also share so that you can get more videos when we put more VTLA videos onto our YouTube channel. Thank you.